Last week, I put a call out there to everybody to let me know what it is that they'd like to do for their next project. And what I heard from quite a few of you was you wanted to do some smaller projects. And smaller projects are great with me. The sampler block shuffle was definitely a big project. So I am thrilled to bring to you our very first project and this is it. Now this is going to turn into something and I'm not going to show you what that is today, but these are our four blocks that we're going to do. And the main block in this is, or main part of the block is, this block right here, which is called the Cat's Cradle. Now, I think a lot of you will remember in the Moda Sampler Block Shuffle, we did a couple of different um, Cat's Cradle or a couple of different blocks with the Cat's Cradle in it. And when we were working on them, I had mentioned that there was actually a Cat's Cradle ruler. And there is. This is the Cat's Cradle ruler. I'll hold it up to here. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. It's going to be tough to see. It's a Creative Grids ruler. And those of you who have followed me for a while know that I absolutely love the Creative Grid rulers. They are my favorite. Now, this one was designed by Deb Heatherly. And I will tell you, this ruler is great. It's just, I know it's a specialty ruler and we all have rulers galore but this is a really nice one for a couple of reasons. Number one, this one real ruler is all you need to totally make the block. So you get your pieces cut and then this one's it. This one squares up your block. It does all of it in just the one. And the other thing that I really liked about it was I made two blocks at once. So to make this quilt, each quilt has got four um, cat's cradles in it. So it was really fast and easy to make this up. So today I'm going to show you how I pressed my fabric to get ready to make it. And a lot of you asked me to show you how I go about cutting up my fabric. I know we bring this gorgeous fabric home and we don't want to cut it up because it's so pretty. We're afraid we're going to make a mistake on it. So I'm going to show you how I cut it. And then I'm going to show you exactly how I go about putting together the Cat's Cradle block. You will need your ruler, the Cat's Cradle ruler, in order to do it. So I will see what I can do about finding a place to order them. If not, I can always get them for you. So we've got three simple blocks in this, in this big block. It's, it does finish at 12 inches, so it's a substantial block compared to what we've been working on. I want to get this line back up again so that you can see it. So the cat's cradle is one block. This simple, simple two patch, which I think is um, each piece is two and a half by four and a half, I think. I'll double check that and make sure. Um, that two and a half by four and a half would be uncut, unfinished, each block. And then this simple four patch is our final block. So that's all it's made up of. It was a really quick and easy, easy quilt. I made it out of two, four, six, eight fat quarters and then background fabric. And stay tuned and I'll show you how I went about making it. The first thing that I do is grab my Mary Ellen's Best Press and lay my fat quarters flat down on my ironing board and my big board is deep enough that I'm able to lay one piece down and still have room to iron. And you can see what I'm doing is just after I've sprayed it well with the best press, just going over it from one end to the other and ironing it or pressing it, whichever you'd like to say. And then when I get to the parts that have got some good creases in it, I'll just pause the iron there for a second to make certain that I get it pressed really well and it's pretty good and flat. One of the other things that I'll do is I'll actually iron 
four up to four layers of fabric at the same time. So I've taken the stack of the darker fabrics. I'm laying it out. I'm smoothing it from the center out. Then spraying it with the best press. And then you'll watch me iron it again. And here I go. Just getting it good and ironed. I'm going to do that for the entire stack of four fabrics or up to four fabrics at once. And then I will move over to the lighter colored fabric and do the exact same thing. Just press one piece after the other, stacking them one on top of another until I get all of my pieces pressed. This is the way I find it the easiest to press back quarters. Just, it tends to work really well for me and they get pressed really well, especially the lower pieces because they've actually been pressed at least four times. So here I go again with the next one. Some more Mary Ellen's Best Press. I'm going to spray it good and then I will again you know, start towards the uh, salvage and work my way up the fabric to the cut edge. So that's how I go about pressing my fabric. So what I'm going to do is I've laid out my two dark fabrics. I'm going to cut two blocks at once. These are my two dark fabrics and these are my two light prints. And you can see what I've done is I've pressed them together and laid them all out and then I'm going to cut them. So the very first thing I need to do is according to my directions here for the dark prints, I need two five by six two two and a half inch squares and four four and a, two and a half by four and a half so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this five inches wide because then not only can i get my five by six inch square but i can get a couple of my two and a half inch squares off of it just kind of use up the most that i can so i'm going to take my ruler oops sorry for all the noise i'm going to take my big ruler and the first thing I've done is I have laid my fabric down on my board. I'll move my cutting instructions aside. I've laid my fabric down on the board and I've made certain that the salvage across the bottom is really straight. The next thing I did was lined them up nice. Then I'm going to first create a straight line. Now, what I do to get the straight line, or what I use is, I use my cutting mat. So I'm lining it up. I'm lining ooh, ooh, this bottom straight line, one of my full lines, up against the bottom line. I'll move this out right here of my mat. And then I use my numbers at the top and my numbers at the bottom to have the same exact number. I'm going to cut. I'm lining it up good. I'm going to do a trim. Make sure that I've trimmed off both pieces and I have. Now I'm going to pick up my ruler. I'm going to move it farther into my fabric to start with. Then I'll slide it back to where I need to cut it. My next cut needs to be five inches. So I've put my ruler at five inches. I'm still using my board to make sure that my ruler is straight, but that's really all I'm doing. That's all I'm really using it for, is just to really make sure that my ruler's straight and that I still have a nice straight line here on my five inches. So I'm gonna make my five inch cut. And then I'm just going to take this fabric and I'm going to kind of, oops, I missed a little piece. It didn't cut solid. So I'll take my rotary cutter over it again without moving it. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to fold it up 
in quarters and I'm gonna just push it aside. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big piece of fabric and I'm just gonna carefully rotate it around. Again, I'm using the straight line on my mat and I'm sorry about the sun, but I'm using my straight line on the mat to make sure that my piece of fabric is nice and straight. Now I've gotta trim it again so I'm taking my long ruler so that I can use the ruler to match up on my mat. And I've gotta cut this down because my fat quarters weren't the same length. And there's my first cut. So now I'm gonna take this ruler and set it aside, make sure that I've got my fabric trimmed off. Now I'm gonna take a smaller ruler to start working with. This is my nine and a, whoops, my nine and a half inch creative grits. And I'm gonna start cutting my blocks now. Now remember, I've got two layers of fabric here, so I'm cutting two blocks at once. So my first cut is five inches by six inches. So I'm gonna take, using my ruler, I'm lining up here and I'm lining up here. And then my last line up is over here. So I've got my six inch piece. I'm gonna make two piles. They'll probably end up outside of, oh, nope, they are not out of camera range. Make two piles. My next cut I need to do is I need two, two and a half inch squares. So if I go to two and a half inches, again, I'm lining up the top, down the side. So I'm doing both at once, okay? Now this time, I'm gonna leave my hand on this and I'm just gonna pick up my fabric and I'm just gonna slide it away just a little bit. And I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna rotate it because I'll get my two, two and a half inch blocks right here. So I'm gonna cut those, put them in my little pile Okay, there's my two, two and a half inch. I'm gonna take my little pen. I love these, these pens. This is one of those, let's see if I can get it to the name for you. Oh, there isn't a, there isn't a name. Oh, there it is. Get it up so that you can see it. This is one of those fric friction pens by Pilot. These are great when I'm cutting things out because I use them to mark off on my paper what I've cut. So I've made those two cuts. Then when I'm done, I can just press it away. All right, so what I've done, because I've got two blocks I'm working, I'm gonna set my two blocks aside. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my four patches that go in the center. So my four patches are made up of two, light two and a half inch squares and two dark two and a half inch squares and then two light two and a half inch squares and then two dark. So I'm just gonna set those up right sides together and I will be using these as my leaders and my enders as I'm working on my cat's cradle. So there's those two. Now my other two. these two. I actually think I'm going to switch these up because look at these two. They're both real angular and I think I want uh, something that contrasts it a little bit more so I'm going to switch it up to these. Okay, I'm going to switch that one. and this one, all right? All right? So there's those leaders and enders. I set those over by my machine. And now I'll put these two together. And then these two. The next thing I'm gonna do so that I don't mess up my blocks is I'm gonna take my two piles and I'm going to switch my light fabrics, all of them right now, so that I don't forget and so that they're all switched up. So there I go. 
My next thing that I need to do is I need to take out my four and a half inch long strips. There's four of them. So I'm gonna do those and my white ones, okay? And I'm going to stack those together, right sides together. Whoop, I'll come back on camera so that I can also make these leaders and enders, okay? Do that. With white fabrics that are white on white prints, you gotta be really careful to make sure that you've got your right sides together. I've lined up my side pieces. Those are gonna be used as leaders and enders, and then these are my four patches from the center, and again, I'm gonna use those as leaders and enders. So I'm gonna set those aside a little bit, not too far. And then I'm gonna take out my other pieces and then and my directions to my cat's cradle. And what I need to do first, based on their directions, is the first thing I need to do is take my longer pieces and I need to take my little squares and I'm going to sew one on each end. So I'm gonna go one and two and then three and four. And I'm gonna do that on both pieces. When Then once I've done that, then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch across this line. I'm gonna do that to all eight pieces. Then I'm gonna press them according to my directions, and then I'll be back to show you the next step. So as I continue with my cat's cradle, my next step is, is they told me to how to sew the two sides together. So I'm doing that, I'll show you on this one because it's a little bit brighter and I think you can see it better. So there, I'm gonna sew those together exactly how the directions on my cat's cradle ruler tell me to. And then I have to do a little clipping and pressing again. And then I'm going to show you one of the neatest parts about this cat's cradle ruler. So I'm going to be back in just a few minutes again. So I'm going to take my fabric and I have to make sure that I keep it with the right ones. So here's one. And what I'm going to do is Grab my cat's cradle ruler, because it tells me exactly how to do it. And I'm going to line it up just like they tell me to on the directions. So I'm lining it up in the neck, and I will take my Frixie, one of my Frixion pens by Pilot, and I'm going to draw a line. And what I'm doing here is marking my sewing line. Okay, so there's one. Now I'm gonna twist this and I'm gonna mark my second sewing line. Once I've finished this, there goes my second one. I've got my two sewing lines. I'm going to take a couple of pins. These are my favorite, the flower head pins. And I'm just gonna secure it all down. And I'm going to stitch from one end to the other, then from this end back again. Once I've stitched it, then I'm gonna show you the very next step, which is, again, very easy and really cool. So I'm gonna do that on all four of my pieces and then I'll sew them, but I gotta get that done on all four first. All right, so the first step I have to do is I have to trim my piece up and excuse the glare in the ruler, but I wanna get it as close as I can so you can see. So this is my first step. I'm gonna trim the quarter, turn it, and the quarter inch line goes right on my sewn line. So I'm gonna line it up again, and I'm just gonna trim it. Okay, 
Next step is I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna press it. And when I press it, I'm gonna press it to this dark side. So just a second. All right, so you can see now out of my one piece, I'll back up the camera a little bit. Out of my one piece, I now have two cat's cradles, but they're not perfectly square yet. So I'm gonna go back to the exact same ruler that I've used the whole time and I'm now going to line it up and it tells me where to line it up on the square and where to line it up on the sides and I'm going to trim it. Now, the neatest part about this is, is now once I've trimmed it and it tells me where to trim it on both sides, I'm going to line it up again. I'm going to line my point up, my point where my seams come together. And again, where my seams come together, and I'll trim it again. Perfectly square cat's cradle. I'm going to finish up all the rest of them and then show you what our next steps. I hope you enjoy walking through with me while I press my fabric. I showed you how I go about cutting my pieces and how I put these together. On Friday, I will be back to show you how I'm going to piece these simple nine patch because that's what it is now. It's a simple, I'll spread it apart just a little bit so that you can see. It's a basic nine patch. Let's get it all apart because that makes it easier for you to understand. At least I know it makes it easier for me. So you can see it's just a basic nine patch and I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about putting it together. And I'm going to show you what ends up going all the way around it and how I'm going to finish this quilt off. So I will see you on Friday. I hope you're having a great week. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. Tell your friends about me. And don't forget to subscribe so that you make sure that you get an announcement whenever I do put up a new video. I put up videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a great week. See you on Friday. Bye.